Space Hulk, Games Workshop's biggest enigma. A game that doesn't seem to come with anything new. Visuals directly copied from an 80s movie that the internet has mixed opinions on, yet still sells in droves and is frequently talked about like a legendary game. So today I'm going to try to figure out is Space Hulk a terrible game? Why is this game talked about so much? And what is the history behind the game making it such a classic today? Space Hulk was released in 1989, set in the 40k universe. The board game itself is quite simple and is played like a two-player game, battling each other out on the Space Hulk. One playing as the Space Marine Terminators and the other one playing as the Gene Stealers with near endless amounts of models. Both taking turn achieving objectives, the Terminator player, however, is given a certain amount of time to complete his tasks, creating an interesting dynamic in varying gameplay depending on which side of this battle you are on. The game is so blatantly inspired by the 1986 movie Aliens, that many of the people that bought the game did so because it reminded them of the alien setting. The tight, nearly claustrophobic corridors. The aliens with the long snouts and just the atmosphere in general. Among board game fans, the game was received with mixed praise. But as the game grew, the first edition of Space Hulk ended up being a massive success and won the Origin Awards for Best Science Fiction and Fantasy Game in 1989. The Lore For a very long time, probably from 10 years to 16 years old, young Emil thought that a Space Hulk was the big terminators on the front of the box art. But no, Space Hulks are massive vessels drifting in and out of the warp an alternative dimension used to travel interstellar distances. Most of the time they are massive derelicts of spaceships and other junk drifting through space that come together into massive constructions. Sometimes they're even bigger than the moon. Since these hulks sometimes consist of items and technology that has been lost for millennia, exploring them can be of great value for the Imperium of Men. Therefore, elite Imperium forces, squads of Terminators, are sent to board these space hulks and collect the lost artifacts, and to purge the hulk of any alien invaders. However, very few of these missions are successful, because the Space Hulks can be very dangerous. Mostly because the Space Hulks are often used as transport by less sophisticated races such as the Space Orcs, Gene Stealers or Chaos Renegades, which occasionally use them to invade other worlds. But the game wasn't met with all roses and daisies. The reception in some magazines were even negative. According to Wikipedia, in the August 1989 edition of Games International, Brian Walker admired the quality of the production and the miniatures inside. However, he found that the game lacked balance, since the Space Marines nearly always lost badly. He concluded by giving giving the game a poor review of 2 out of 5, saying there are some great ideas buried in the deep bowels of Space Hulk, but at the moment ideas are all they are. <laughs> While other reviewers like John Thiessen in Challenger magazine said, I recommend Space Hulk, or to quote an Australian friend of mine, this one is a ripper. But as time moved on, the reception seemed to change even more for the better. Even Brian Walker retracted his grade and increased it with one point, thus the ranking was moved up to 3 out of 5. It's okay, I guess. The game. The game is set up on a board, made up of various corridor and room tiles. They can be freely rearranged and locked together like a jigsaw puzzle to represent the inside of these derelict spaceships. The game is notable for its hidden mechanics, which is what causes a lot of the tension and excitement in the game. The actual number of gene stealers in play is actually hidden from the Space Marine player as they come into play only as blips, which can represent either one or three miniatures. 
In the basic version of the game, playing as the Gene Stealers is pretty straightforward. So simple, in fact, that the game is quite playable as a solo game. Playing the Marines, on the other hand, is quite engaging and tactically difficult, partially because the Space Marines are limited in time. The expansion packs of the first edition adds a human Gene Stealer hybrid, which can carry weapons to the Gene Stealer player's forces, adding a little bit more depth to the Gene Stealer player's side. As you might see, the first edition came with two expansions the first one being Deathwing, which again won Best Science Fiction and Fantasy Board Game in 1990. And the second one, Gene Stealer, which today is quite often considered the weakest point in the Space Hulk history. And when it comes to popular things, did you guys know that Witch Song Miniatures is the number one most subscribed tribes on my mini factory? And after years of you guys asking, they've finally opened up a Patreon. And the reason that our sponsor is the most popular home 3D printable miniature subscription is because instead of asking $15 and giving you 24 minis that you might print one from, they're asking one single dollar to put all of that focus into the probably coolest big bad boy miniature you're gonna see that month. I mean, just look at the size and monstrosity of this thing. This month you get the Ogre Mortar Specialist, and if you join the $3 tier instead of the $1 tier, you get an additional miniature. This month, the Wererat Monstrosity. And it's not like you need another reason to join their Patreon community, but right now you get two additional miniatures if you're a Squidmore follower. It's the Persephone to War, as well as Death Reborn. They're two most popular miniatures included in the price for $1. So yeah, I uh, just follow the link to their Patreon down below in the video description and if you're not into subscriptions You don't want to spend one dollar per month right now You get 90% off their my mini factory store if you use the code with WS at checkout But that's only for a limited time But now let's have a look at the next defining chapter in Space Hulk's history the video game in 1993, we got to see a completely different take on Space Hulk, with Warhammer and Games Workshop's first ever appearance in a video game, as Space Hulk finally was released on PC and Amiga, getting a ton of new people interested in the Warhammer universe and the game in particular. In 1995, another video game came out, Space Hulk Vengeance of the Blood Angels. Pieces. In 1996, it was time for the second edition of Space Hulk. This was a way more simplified version of the original game. It came with updated rules, miniatures and board tiles. From this point on, there has never been any more Space Hulk expansion sets released. However, additional scenarios and board sections have been released through White Dwarf, but that's not really the same thing as a full-on expansion. One of the more notable is Fangs of Fenris, which involve Wolfguard Terminators from the Space Marine chapter of the Space Wolves. For those of us born in the late 80s or early 90s, this is the box that we saw in our friends' cabinets and in the game store. However, I was mostly into fantasy at that time, so I never actually got the time to play this one. It took all the way until September 2009 before it was time for the hulking madness again. A 13 year wait for all of the fans. People were so excited that the game sold out three days before it came out on mail order. And since the game was intended to be a limited release, Games Workshop announced that they had no plans of making more copies. Where have we heard this before? I don't know, maybe <laughs> Cursed City, no, no, no. among others. The game sold out in a matter of hours and they are not expecting it to return online. The rules were modernized to some extent, but in many ways, this one is very similar to the first edition of Space Hulk. There is one thing that sets this box apart though. Because of the advancement in sculpting and in mold making, miniatures for this box is leaps and bounds ahead of the previous Terminators that had been released. And 
And adding even more to that hype, the Terminators in this box are specifically designed for this game and were the only way to get Blood Angels Terminators with some cooler posing because the posing on these ones were really top of their game when it came out. And the Gene Stealers came in a variety of poses that hadn't been seen before. The scopes were designed by Games Workshop's Alex Hedström for Space Hulk specifically, unlike the other Space Hulk versions being shared sets with the Warhammer 40k main game. But the hype didn't end with the third edition, because during the fall of 2014 Games Workshop came with yet another update, the fourth edition version of Space Hulk. But again, as we are gullible to everything Games Workshop releases, being incredibly great at creating fear of missing out, the game sold out in less than 24 hours as an online pre-order. Meaning that, just like previously, a lot of people missed out on the game that they were really excited about. In 2017, Games Workshop released another update to the rules, the December issue of White Dwarf. After that, however, it's been quite silent from Games Workshop. But to figure out why the game is so popular, why it always sells out instantly even though it never gets full grades in the reviews, I had to take the pulse of the community. So I asked the people in the Space Hulk Facebook group. And for many people it's the ease. The game rules are straightforward and easy to grasp and they've stayed largely the same since the game's inception. It's not like with Warhammer 40k or Age of Sigmar where there are games updates every six months and new army books every other year. The game stays the same and you can pick it up and play a game even if it's been four years. This also means that the game is easy to enjoy with your family, pretty much anyone can join in. And you don't have to spend four hours to play a game, you can play around in 30 minutes. For other people it's how fun and tactical the game is. And other people just bought the game just to use the minis in their Space Marine armies. Much like with Hero Quest, there is a massive community behind Space Hulk. Tons of 3D printable gaming accessories, gaming tables and dungeons that you can then paint up and make the most immersive gaming table you've ever seen. Here are some of the awesome images we were shared by the community in the Facebook group. But in reality, as a conclusion, I think it's a mix of everything. Nostalgia, it's one of the first board games released by Games Workshop set in the 40k universe. It is the first video game made set in the 40k universe. The setting is inspired by some of the biggest movies in the 80s and 90s. And some people in the group even went as far as to say that the game is the best one that Games Workshop ever released. Is it? I don't know, I would love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Or maybe even hear which game you think is the best one Games Workshop ever made through the years. If you want to see more videos like this, smashing like on the video is a great way of telling us that you want to see more videos like this. We've done similar videos on Space Crusade and Hero Quest and Mordheim and if you want to see more Again, let us know by leaving a comment on which game you want to see us cover next. I got a few big thanks today, Linus Rode for letting us borrow his last edition of Space Hulk, Erik Tudén for lending us his first edition and second edition, and of course the expansions, our sponsor for this week, just thank you so much. And finally and lastly, our patrons, without you guys we would not be able to make videos, so thanks for every little dollar that you guys pitch in to help make this work. Have a great day. Bye-bye.